Sorry, I'm not going to watch pizza. Oh. Hey. And the Imo said, which is going to be a very good thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, this is Imo Shaif. Let's get into um, teenism.com. This is the part of the show where we discuss um, hot issues to do with teenagers and uh, parenting uh, with Coach Tafadzwa. Coach Tafadzwa is a coach for teenagers and today um, our topic how to build confidence how to build your child's confidence we're also live on facebook you can join the conversation there as well coach good morning good morning how are you doing i'm good how are you doing i'm awesome as always wonderful good to see you hey good to see you today so um building your child's confidence yes uh it's a very important topic because yes. if you look at it um our success, most of our success in life uh, depend on our level of confidence. Mm. You know, whether you're going to be hired or not depends on your ability to communicate. And that ability to communicate effectively is in itself a function of confidence. Think about the interviews that we go to. Rarely do people have an opportunity to actually assess and test you on your ability to do the job. It's just questions. It's just giving you an opportunity to express yourself. To express what you can do and based on that people are going to make an assessment whether or not to hire you so you may be very talented you may be very good at your work but if you fail to present yourself confidently like in an interview you're never going to have that opportunity to actually prove yourself so it's important to be confident you know think about even the people that we want to hire maybe it's a plumber at home or maybe you want something fixed the way they talk the way they express themselves yeah if they don't express confidence you're also going to lose confidence in them so sometimes yes, I'm good. Ah, I'm good. Try. Yeah, I'm ah. good. <laughs> then you're like, no, <laughs> I, I can't take that risk. Yeah. So that person may be very good, but because they can't express themselves confidently, that becomes a problem. So maybe first of all, let me talk about uh, the definition <coughs> of confidence itself, so that as we continue, we are on the same, um, we are on the same page. So confidence is that feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of their ability or. Uh, qualities so you have to appreciate your abilities you have to appreciate your qualities and then you're self-assured based on that so it's something that you have to be taught especially if you're a child because you don't even know what you're capable of you don't even know your value or your self-worth mm -hmm. so from uh, a tender age that depends mostly on the kind of environment that a child is uh, raised in so I'm sure uh, a, a, a lot of people can agree with me that we actually know that certain children from certain areas are confident, more mm. confident than others, yeah. or certain children from a certain school are more confident than others. And, and, and that has nothing to do with uh, their natural abilities, but it has everything to do with the way they're nurtured, the mm. way that they are groomed. So I'll talk about uh, some points here, what parents can do to actually build their children's um, confidence. And the first thing that I'll talk about is positive reinforcement which is basically noticing and mentioning or praising uh, the good qualities in a child. So when a child does something good, you notice it, you mention it, you praise it. I don't know if you've realized this, even with little children, maybe they are on the dance floor and they're just dancing, and then you start praising that dance. You're like, oh, one man, we did have time, I'm going to stay again, and all of that. Now they feel very confident. They feel mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm doing something and I'm being noticed. So it's important. And what I've realized is with m m most parents, they prefer criticism to uh, positive re reinforcement or positive uh, feedback. So rather than uh, mentioning and pointing out or kidding their children doing the right thing, they would rather kid them doing the wrong thing and then point out critique. So when you're always critical, that in itself actually stifles a child's um, confidence mm -hmm. and it takes me to the second point here which are which are called the affirmation ratio so this is basically the ratio of positive feedback to criticism so just check yourself how often do you give positive reinforcement or feedback compared to the times that you're giving uh, criticism so you know we all have this emotional bank account so when somebody uh, praises us there's a boost in it when somebody says um, uh, compliments us there's a boost but then when somebody criticizes us or rebukes us or corrects us, it's more like a withdrawal. So if there are more withdrawals than uh, deposits, what's going to happen is that your account is going to be withdrawn. 
and that results in a serious lack of, of, of confidence. So it's important. And another way to, um, to affirm or to give this um, positive feedback is to actually be supportive of your children's extracurricular activities. So even attending their sport, you know, just the fact that my mom is there watching me as I play my basketball. It means she values the talent that I've got in basketball and that in itself is going to build my confidence. If my parent is not too busy to attend, then I know that they're actually supporting me mm -hmm. and they are with me. Because think, of, uh, think about it, there are parents who would be too busy for anything positive that happens at their child's school, but should their child be involved maybe in one of those mischievous acts and they are called by the school to come, they will attend. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. attend. So positive re reinforcement actually works and uh, boosts a child's, um, a child's confidence. And also, since I've said that confidence is about that self-assurance that arises from one's appreciation of their abilities, it's important to realize that children have got different uh, abilities. They are gifted differently. So I may not be um, the most intelligent child in, in, in class. I may not be in the top five, but maybe I am great at badminton. So this is something where I can derive my confidence from. So if you show them that you support it and you're praising it, then overly my confidence is built. But if everything I'm good at is not taken seriously, and then the things that I'm not so good at are the things that everybody focuses on, at the end of the day, I'm going to lose my confidence. Mm. Then moving on, um, there is something I call goal clarity here. So it's, it's important to always ensure that you help your children to have a goal that they are working towards achieving, a target that they try and achieve so that they know how to channel their energies, their focus on it. And in doing that, it builds their confidence because they will get to a point where they will achieve that, 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 that confidence and they'll be happy. I don't know if you've seen how kids do when they're playing. So maybe it's, 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 it's a soccer game or something like that. If somebody scores, there's this excite, excitement, there's this celebration because they, they were aiming towards something. And now that they've achieved it, there's this boost in their confidence there's this happiness that comes so it may not be a sporty but even in school then you give them a target and you say i want you to get maybe uh two units for your subject and then the goals have to be realistic obviously because if you, if you set them too high they will never be able to achieve them and that also can uh, uh can bring discouragement which dents uh, their, their confidence so just having that goal clarity and giving them responsibilities so i want you to fill that bucket with water for the little ones if they just do that and you praise them for it it boosts their confidence mm. so, so so that is important i've also realized that kids with um, with pets because they, they know that i have this responsibility i have to take care of my little puppy i have to take care of my little bed or something like that that also boosts their confidence because they know they're responsible for something and when they do it when they accomplish it that actually boosts their confidence and then uh, moving on, and this is closely related to goal clarity, boundaries. It's important to clarify the boundaries to children. You know, when children are not sure about what's wrong or what's good, they, 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 they just, they, there's this confusion that comes to them and they're no longer are sure of what to do or what not to do. Um, I don't know if you have had uh, those in incidences, maybe it's in a shop, and then the mom or the dad is walking with the little child and then they see all those toys around and then yeah. they run, run to them and then it's evil. So you never told them, Kuti, you're not supposed to do that. In a so shop. Now, yeah, in a shop. Because some of them, yeah. you're like, ah. <laughs> it becomes too much where the parent can, can really even control mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. child and yeah. it's sad. So that, that, that becomes confusion to the child. Mm -hmm. They no longer know, okay, so... I thought the other day we were at this play center and I could play around with the kid, with the toys. Now I'm not allowed. So what am I allowed? What am I not allowed to? So it's important to just have those clear boundaries and then they will know. And then moving on uh, here, there's something that, uh, that I call the three A's and that's affection, attention and acceptance. So I'll start with affection. Affection, attention and acceptance. acceptance. Okay. So I'll start with affection. So this is just expressing love, you know, the I love yous, the high and all that you know there are parents who find it very difficult to <laughs> just express that affection just to hug their child like just to say i love you i think for, like for, for parents like of our generation it's so important guys to mm -hmm. to be able to to do that with the kids you know to 
yeah to be affectionate towards them mm-hmm. yeah it is yeah yeah it's simple but you know yeah yeah the, the, then the next thing is acceptance this is just accepting the fact that your child is unique and children are different mm. you know there's this temptation to compare and say what no i never go na ningi itasa na ningi itasa na ningi but you you really should understand that children are different and then you should accept your child and then i think co- comparison as a motivation doesn't work yeah yeah it doesn't, it doesn't work but then sometimes parents you know they think what it works but what i think oh i don't go no go in there yeah but then if you really want yeah. to see how that doesn't work uh listen to your kids comparing you to other parents Ah, no, yeah. man. That's when you see, you know, no, no, this is not right. Because you want to say, well, I'm going to tell you, 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 you won't take it, you won't take it right. You won't take it okay. And then there is um, attention. So attention, listening to children is important. Remember, I said confidence stems from that feeling of self-assurance, which is based on you acknowledging that I am important. So when you speak and somebody listens to you especially your parent you understand that my opinions are valued what i say is important so that builds your confidence so that attention is very important and that's also how we get to understand what's happening in our children's life you know sometimes a child may be experiencing bullying or something like that but because we're not paying attention we will not be able to tell we will not be able to actually see it and then that becomes a it becomes a problem mm-hmm. and also with attention it's it's important to listen to understand you know there's this thing called psychological safety where you're giving your child an opportunity to express themselves without any consequences so you know sometimes we say kids lie and the reason why they've now started lying is that they know if they are to fully express themselves and tell the truth they're likely going to get a beating for it or they're likely going to be uh, punished for it So at the end of the day they will try and say what you want them to say to avoid the consequences. So in 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 doing that what you may actually be doing is you're nurturing the habit of lying which will be very difficult to get rid of or which you may never be able to get rid of. My so where, where, where do we where do we draw the line for them to know that there are consequences to to their actions and uh, for them also to the really open up when they have done something where do we draw the line there I, I, i think it's important to differentiate to say they are uh you praise them for telling the truth mm-hmm. but then there are also consequences for certain actions so i may tell the truth and i'm praised for it or maybe um I've, i'm asking good india and 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 it's uh it's, it's it's something it's a serious matter i actually need the mind i'd rather have my child tell me good india and i told and I told and then I made praise them for telling the truth but then caution them could you could remember I was like I was right next time if you do this you're going to get into trouble for it mm, okay. so there can be a balance between the two because if it's as if we are just going to hit them I'm going to continue fear and then or master the, the the art of deception to a point that will actually also vouch for them when they are in actual fact lying Mm. and it's funny when it's a it's a house with like many children many siblings all the siblings would know but we are in here and they know what exactly happened but if you are that type of a mom <laughs> who will not allow kids to speak uh, uh the truth so you're the only one who's ignorant everyone else knows. you're the only one who doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah everyone else knows exactly what's happening yeah And then the other thing here that I've mentioned that will help your children develop confidence is just your own conduct. So to what extent do you uh, a, a exemplify do you exude confidence? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're talking yourself, when you're doing things, are you confident enough? Do you always confess negativity? Mm-hmm. Do you have this um what you call uh, negative self-talk that kind of thing? So if you're that kind of a person, it's then difficult to try and teach your children to be confident. So sometimes they learn to be confident by just by just looking at you and looking at how you do your things. So it's important to also work on your confidence as your parent, as a parent. And then uh the next thing here is um I say to promote a growth mindset. So there are two kinds of mindset that children can have. One is a fixed one where they believe that they are either good or bad at mm-hmm. something. So I get a number one, I'm good at this and that is their uh that is their mindset. And then I got for you I can't do this. That's their mindset. So the danger with those mindsets is that for that one I'm waiting number one now. 
Agaza Chadavida number one. They can't take it. They can't, they don't realize that no, intelligent, intelligence is elastic. It can be stretched. So it's not fixed. You're not just good and it ends wow. there. You have to continuously uh, work on it to make yourself better. And then this one, Afoyira, would say that if you um, exert more effort, you're likely going to pass. So how we do this is we help children to cope with failure by praising their effort rather than just the result. So you may actually see that my child is putting a lot of effort. They're really doing something, and then you praise it. They may not get the result that they were expecting, but because you've praised the effort, next time they're going to be willing to put effort again because they know that when they put effort, they will actually um, excel. And speaking of that, I'm actually reminded of, of something. This is a point I meant to um, talk about on the attention bit. You know, I've had um, discussions with parents where good maybe they only discovered that their child had uh, an attention disorder, maybe when they were in grade seven, or maybe they were even in, in high school, mm. because they were not paying attention. Mm. Your child is actually putting effort, and when you talk to them verbally and everything, everything yeah. is right, yeah. but when it just comes to the exams and, uh, and that, they're not getting it. And then you quickly conclude, but if you were paying attention, you're actually saying, no, they're putting their effort, and they're actually trying. So it's a problem that's beyond just um, just congregating. So it's important to also um, pay attention on that. But anyway, I mixed up the points. I was talking about an accurate mindset. <laughs> and I was saying, uh, learn to praise efforts. And the last thing that I'll talk about is, please teach your children early about puberty. Because normally when puberty starts, mm. a lot of children experience a decline in, 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 in confidence. Because this is the time where their bodies are changing emotionally. So because of all these changes, there is a drop in, in, in confidence. But if you were to teach about puberty proactively early, they will know that this is natural, it happens to everyone, and they will take it with them, and that will not affect their confidence. So <clears throat> just before I go, let me give my, uh, my contacts. So my WhatsApp number is 0773-606-7280. 0773-606-728. And I've got a WhatsApp group for parents where we discuss issues to do with teenagers, issues to do with raising children. If you're a parent and you want to be part of that, those WhatsApp groups, please send your name and your child's name to my WhatsApp number and I'll add you. And also, if you have a child who's going through puberty and you want a PDF on how to talk to them about uh, puberty, also feel free to just send your number to, I mean, your name okay. and your child's name <laughs> to my number. I'll give it for the last time. 0773-606-728. Thank you, Coach Tafazwa. Thank you so much. Teamsin.com. We get to do this again next week, same time. And I can't wait. We're live on Facebook. You can share this with the parents. You can go watch it, rewatch it, and um, you know, learn how to build your child's confidence. Very, very important conversation we were having.